Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Una Daly again, the Community College Outreach Director at the Open Courseware Consortium, and I'd like to welcome you to Open Education Week 2014. Um, it's actually been going on all week, so uh, maybe you've caught some of our earlier uh, webinars or events uh, that are occurring. Um, I'm so glad that you came this morning. Uh, this is uh, one of our three panels on Community College um, OER innovations, and I'm very pleased to be here with Boyang Che from the Washington State Board of Community and Technical Colleges and Jen Claudini from Lane Community College in Oregon. Before we get started, um, I'm just going to mention that um, we are using the Blackboard Collaborate system uh, from Washington State, and we thank them for that. Um, you should see on the left-hand side of your uh, monitor, for those of you who are new to this, um, you'll see a chat window and a participants list. And uh, you should see yourself there in the participants list. And please use that chat window to send comments um, and questions during um, our webinar. Uh, we will try to answer those as we go in the chat window, but we'll have some time at the end for um, a longer Q&A. And um, our order of presentations will be, um, I'll give you a little brief overview of OER, and uh, then we'll go right into Washington State's faculty OER uh, training uh, that has been going on now for uh, I think the last year at least, and, and Boyang will give us more information on that. And then our last presentation will be from Lane Community College on their OER faculty fellow, fellowship, which uh, won the WOW um, 2013 award uh, that is put out by Wichi. So uh, you've got some uh, stellar presenters here today. And, um, Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and give them uh, a moment to introduce themselves. Uh, Boyang, shall we start with you? Sure. Can everyone hear me? Can I have a, a check mark or any kind of sign that you can actually hear me? Oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> All righty. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Bo Young. I'm a program admin of open education and e-learning here at the Washington State Board for Community and Technical Colleges. Um, so in the state of Washington, there are 34 community and technical colleges. And Washington State Board uh, is the state government agency that supports all 34 colleges, like Department of Education, so, which is where I work. Um, so the first serious OER project that our system managed um, was open course library. Uh, we have developed 81 open course packages uh, through that project. And all courses have been openly available since March 2013. Of course, all licensed under a Creative Commons attribution license. So at the State Board, I am managing all professional developments around OER. I do the research and data collection in OER, too, and training in OER. Speaking of research, we are almost finishing our um, statewide uh, study on faculty's use of open educational resources. We have received 770 responses from our system faculty about their use of OER, and we are just we are we are very close to finishing up our uh, qualitative portion of the study, which was about um, interviewing 50 faculty. Um, so um, uh, we are uh, so we are, we are very excited about this research data, and once it is published, I will I'll of course make sure to offer another webinar to um, share what we have found. And um, uh, you know, and uh, personally, I live in Olympia, Washington, uh, with my husband and my four-year-old daughter who's getting more independent every day. Um, yesterday, she told me that she can't play with me because she's too busy drawing. So <laughs> all the good development. That's it. All right. Thank you, Boyang. Uh, Boyang is certainly a, a, a busy person um, and, and has accomplished so much over the last few years in the OER space. So really thrilled to have Boyang talk with us today. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Jen Claudini, the reference and instruction librarian, and also the faculty technology specialist at Lane Community College. Jen? 
Hi, everybody. So I hope my audio is working. Give me a thumbs up or a check. All right, great. <laughs> so, um, yes, my name is Jen Clivini. I'm a reference and instruction librarian and a faculty technology specialist at Lane Community College. And um, I'm the OER um, lead here on campus. I, my, my main job around OER is to help support our faculty instructors on um, adopting and integrating OER into their courses. Um, I'm very happy to be able to present uh, information about our incentive program, the OER Faculty Fellowship. Um, I work with instructors through the fellowship, and I also work with instructors uh, who would rather sort of adopt on a, a slower scale. You know, I, I work with folks who are interested in pursuing the whole structure of the fellowship, as well as folks who are interested in sort of dabbling. Um, my normal job is divided. I'm about 60% uh, reference and instruction librarian, and then 40% uh, faculty technology specialist. We have several, uh, another, a handful of faculty technology specialists here on campus, and our job is to help support instructors with um, integrating technology into uh, teaching and learning. Um, so my OER work fall, falls under the faculty technology specialist umbrella. But I, it's really great. I feel like my worlds um, blend quite a bit because I also do a lot of work with instructors to integrate information literacy and research technology into their courses. So um, though my, my time is paid for sort of in two separate buckets, I, I feel like both the components of my jobs or all components of my, my work blend nicely. Um, I live in beautiful Eugene, Oregon. We're having a rare, gorgeous, sunny day. So I'm feeling great. All right, thank you, Jen. And um, uh, uh, once again, I introduced myself a little bit earlier, but I'll let you know I'm from California. And um, the Open Courseware Consortium, um, and I'm from the Community College Consortium from the Open Courseware Consortium, where we support um, community colleges in um, their use of use and adoption of OER to um, expand access for students and enhance teaching and learning. And um, now I want to give a little overview, and I know I'm probably preaching to the choir here, um, but because this is Open Education Week, which um, is an event sponsored by the Open Courseware Consortium, um, to reach out to folks around the world um, to uh, share the benefits and potential benefits of open education. And um, we don't necessarily assume that all of you today are educators. Um, you, or that you may be educators, but you may not be familiar with open ed. So I hope you'll bear with me while I go through these briefly. The Department of Education uh, defines open educational resources as teaching, learning, and research resources that reside in the public domain or have been released under an intellectual property license that permits their free use or repurposing by others. And both the Department of Education and the Department of Labor have been um, quite, quite um, effective promoters of OER in the last few years with some of the grants that they have provided to community colleges for career training. And um, if any of you are on um, our uh, webinar today who, who are participating in those TACT grants, as they are called, uh, please uh, mention that in um, the chat window. So an open license um, is an important uh, part of um, defining OER. Um, and with educational resources, we use the Creative Commons license, where an author of a, um, of a creative work, such as uh, an open textbook, um, the author retains full rights, but they provide a version under a Creative Commons license, which allows others to reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. So it's quite a powerful concept. Um, and obviously, it, it, it makes, um, it, it makes uh, materials far more affordable um, for our students. And it also gives you as faculty additional choices in terms of the materials that you might use in your class. 
And examples, um, I mentioned open textbooks. Um, these could be open courses. They could be open videos, such as the videos at the Khan Academy. Um, really, it's any tool, material, or technique that's used to support ready access to knowledge. And the Community College Consortium mission is promoting adoption of OER to enhance teaching and learning. And um, we do this through supporting professional development. Um, and part of these webinars um, is to support faculty in finding out uh, not only about what OER is, but hearing from their peers, um, finding out about um, collaboration efforts with other colleges that are involved in leading projects in OER. Um, at the Community College Consortium, we are a voice for open education at community colleges, but we work also with four-year colleges and universities because many of our students become your students, and so it's quite important for us to work all work together. And we have <coughs> over 240 colleges in 17 states and provinces, and as you can see, we have quite a few on the West Coast, and I know, I know a number of you are from the West Coast, but um, Love to hear about those of you who might be from um, other areas as well. And thank you, Cindy, for sharing um, that information about the tax grant that you're working on, and, and you're in Philadelphia. I'm sorry, in Pennsylvania consortium. So that's uh, that's very exciting. We definitely have some folks from uh, the East Coast as well today. And finally, um, I wanted to mention for those of you who are uh, with community colleges or interested in uh, working with community colleges. Um, we have an advisory listserv that uh, you are more than welcome to join, and um, we have monthly informal OER chats, and our next one is uh, on Wednesday of next week, March 19th, where we share uh, different OER uh, news and events, and we have monthly webinars. Uh, this month, uh, our monthly webinar is um, for Open Education Week, so it's the three webinars we're having today. But in April, we will have um, a webinar on OER impact research, and in May, one on open licensing and trademarks. We're still trying to figure out the June one. Uh, so make a su suggestion to us if you have a good topic. And all of these webinars and chats are free and open uh, to anyone who would like to participate. So thank you for listening to me. And now um, I'd like to turn this over to uh, Boyan Che to speak about faculty OER training in the state board of Washington. Thank you, Ona. Um, and thank you every, everyone again for coming to the session. I'm really happy to have this opportunity to talk about our um, statewide OER training. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are the state government agency that led Open Course Library Project in, in the state of Washington um, community college system. And um, since that Open Course Library Project, um, there has been a wide spread of interest in using OER among our faculty. And um, so, and according to our statewide survey in faculty use of OER that we have conducted last year, the end of last year, a, a majority of faculty uh, wanted to have really this basic on-ground training, uh, no, basic ground level training on how to use open educational resources, um, which was the motivation uh, to create this system-wide training. So, um, so the purpose of the training was to uh, provide information and experience in using open educational resources in faculty teaching practice. And we discussed the concept of OER, open licenses, and public domain. And most importantly, we provide a plenty of practice in finding the different types of OER and, and, and making the proper attributions as well. So, um, Upon the completion of the training, we expect that the participants will first know what it is, and they should know the difference between open licensing, public domain, and all rights reserved copyright, and they should be able to distinguish the different types of CC licenses, and they should know where to go to find the specific OER, and they should be able to um, properly attribute their authors. And finally, um, they should be able to mark their own work with a Creative Commons license. So it it seems so. They, it, so, um, so these are very important course objectives. But um, we have learned that faculty can learn all of these within just two weeks training. So, the format of the training was um, 
that um, this is a free training that is offered monthly by Washington State Board for Community and Technical Colleges. It is a two-week training. Um, it is online asynchronous. It is fully facilitated. So this is not a self-paced training, and participants are expected to submit all assignments on time to receive a certificate. And of course, all due dates are hard due dates. Um, so that's the format of this class. And we, um, uh, and then we started offering this training in September 2013. And thus far, we have trained about, uh, it's at 200, but we, should, we actually have trained over 300 faculty in the training. Um, and from January 2014, we have actually ex extended the invitation to over 100 colleges who received a grant from Department of Labor just to help them releasing their products under a Creative Commons license. Um, so what's so unique about this training? Um, this is very practice-based how training. We don't discuss anything about history of OER, theoretical background of OER, or conceptual framework of OER, or global trend of OER. We, we don't talk about any of those. We simply focus on what it is and how to do it. So um, since the first training, we have received a very positive feedback from the participants. And many appreciated that practical aspect of this training. Um, and another unique aspect would be that um, this is very uh, competence-based training. There is no partial points given. It's either pass or zero. <laughs> so um, during the training, um, sometimes I would receive feedback from the participants mentioning that I'm so sad to receive zero for my hard work after spending hours and hours to finish assignment 5A. Then, um, but then I would explain the. Uh, I, I then I would explain why that point was given, that, and and they usually um, they usually uh, get satisfied after receiving my feedback um, af with my feedback to every single resubmission they will make. So I let them resubmit assignments over and over again, and I and, and until they get the perfect uh, uh, the, until they, I see the perfection in their uh, submission. So that has been working really well. And that being said, um, if any of you are interested in taking a look at the course content, uh, please use the public version of OER training. Um, let me paste the link on the chat window, actually. So, that's so this pub public version is not facilitated. Uh, this is just for your own um, self-paced learning. But if you are interested in taking our facilitated training, uh, we are willing to invite you to our monthly training in the spirit of openness. <laughs> and as long as you promise to fully commit to the training. And of course, the training is free uh, for anyone. <coughs> so um, that was an overview of our training. So before I actually take you to our training shell, um, do, you, do you have any questions? about anything about the training, about its format, or how it is operated, anything at all? Nope. Great. <laughs> so I'll uh, <coughs> take you to my, OK. So there was a question. How do you reach out and find interested faculty? A great question. And since this is a statewide training and, and we are the state government agency, we have several faculty networks that we reach out regularly. Um, so we will send out this uh, training invitation um, to those networks. And those network majors will spread that, those in, that invitation email to uh, read all of the faculty that are registered to their network. Um, we collaborated with uh, state librarians, state e-learning directors, state faculty coordinators. So that pretty much covers all faculty population. So it, that, um, that's how we have reached out and find, found interested faculty. Another question. Uh, the link would allow us to share the training with our faculty, but for them to go to individual. Yes, of course, this is a public version. Uh, CC license, do whatever you like with it. Um, but uh, for them to 
but uh, your faculty should go would have to go through the content individually. But like I mentioned, like I like like I have mentioned, um, if you or your faculty are seriously uh, uh, considering uh, taking facilitated training, we we will we, we will be we will be happy to invite your faculty to our facilitated training show, as long as they can truly commit to the training. I keep mentioning commitment because um, it is actually a very intensive course, um, intensive two-week course that requires a lot of your time and attention. So, um, uh, so our faculty do, I think, need to make a block of time to pay a full attention to this training. All righty. Any other questions? No, I, I don't see any other questions. Um, I'll accept more questions after I uh, actually show you the training show. So let me do the application share. App share, start sharing. OK. Does does everyone see what I see? It is. Um, do, do, does everyone see the Canvas training show on your screen? Thank you. Thank you. So this is our. Um, one second. So this is our uh, how to use. Uh, open educational educational resources training show that is facilitated that that has just ended actually this week. Um, so as you can see, we have seven modules, um, and, and during the first module, we will just get oriented, uh, learning about the course expecta course expectations, specifications, and 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 due dates, due dates, most importantly, due dates, and. Um, we, and in the, in the first module, we do this very fun interactivity, which is about finding a YouTube video that discusses open education and adds your reflection on it. And this is a simple activity, but it usually becomes the most lively uh, conversation. So let me quickly show you uh, how. So assignment, first assignment, share your YouTube video about open educational resources. And first, on just under first post, look at the number of reflections faculty edit. And after this post, look at all the reflections faculty edit. So this endless postings under one assignment. Do you see the, um, I can't really possibly go through everything because it's just too many. So I'll go back to the uh, module page. So after having that very fun and meaningful first introductory acti activity, um, in module two, in module two here, in module two, uh, you will learn the concept of open education resources, you know, what it is, what it entails, and what it's not. And you will just take a simple quiz here. And in module three, you will learn about the concept of open license. The difference between open license and all and all rights reserved copyright, and you need it. Um, you need this background background knowledge of open license to understand the next module, which is about Creative Commons. So in module four, the, you finally learn about Creative Commons licenses, the types of CC licenses, how to release your work with a CC license, what conditions must you meet to release your work with a CC license. So all the very all the details, and module five is the most uh, how do you say uh, the most exciting and um, most it, 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 mo alrighty. So module five is usually the module that our participants found most challenging and most beneficial because in module five um, the participants will learn about how to find CC licensed video, image, course material, and open textbook. And there are step-by-step -step guides provided for each media type, and um, they will learn. They will also learn how to attribute a CC licensed work as well. And 
and then through assignment 5123, they will have to find um, di different types of openly licensed materials with a proper um, attribution. And in module 6, uh, our participants will learn about the public domain, such as um, how to determine if a work is if a work is in the public domain or, or the difference between public domain and open license, which is very important to understand. And in Module 7, we'll have an opportunity um, to reflect on what we have learned. Um, we'll discuss the benefits and challenges in using OER. So um, that was the overview of the course modules. Uh, any questions, please? Yeah, um, after you guys um, had a chance to look over the content, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact me. I'll type my email address um, on the chat window. I'll be happy to answer to any questions. Thank you. Um, I'll just close this application sharing. And Alrighty, I think Jen, you're up. All right, thank you, William. Um, I'm very uh, excited to be able to tell you about our OER faculty fellowship here at Lane Community College. Um, we have an incentive program that uh, incentivizes instructors to adopt OER. So I thought I'd start a little bit uh, with the problem. We talked a little about this already, so I'll be brief. But um, Many of you probably have seen the report from the recent student PERD report, uh, citing that 65% of students reported not purchasing a, a textbook at least once due to cost. And of those 65% of students, almost all of them, 94% of them, said that they were concerned that their grade might suffer due to the choice of not buying textbooks. Um, this especially impacts our students at our community colleges here um, because, you know, it's a lot of money. The textbooks cost a lot of money and that, that sometimes for our students can be the choice between paying rent or buying groceries. Um, so that has a big impact on our students. Uh, also, when you see the, the results about being concerned about uh, grades and student performance, um, it brings the question of, student success and uh, retention and completion, um, which are also concerns for us here at the community college. We want to make sure that we are, we not just, uh, we don't just allow our students to come into our classes, but that they, they are able to learn and be successful and continue taking classes here. So that's the basics of, of the textbook problem, which I'm sure many of you are already well aware of. Um, a little bit about the history of how our program got started here at Lane Community College. Um, a few years ago, uh, students talked, spoke with our Vice President Sonia Christian and the Dean of Academic Technology, they, the student government, which is called the ASLCC, Associated Students of LCC. Uh, they, they, they spoke with some of our administrators about their concern due to textbook costs. And I think that the conversation was in the context of a tuition rebate. The students had a, a pretty large chunk of money in tuition rebate, and they had to they were able to decide to kind of carve it up uh, and how they would like to spend it here on the campus. So they, they came to our administrators with this idea, these concerns about textbook affordability, and our uh, Dean of Academic Technology, Brad Hinson, who's now at the University of Denver. Uh, I think encourage them to explore options for incentivizing uh, OER adoption on the campus. And so that's what they did. Uh, the students decided to spend a large chunk of their tuition rebate on incentivi incentivization program for uh, faculty in order to adopt open resources. And uh, that's how the initial faculty fellowship was born. So the basic idea was, We'll take our instructors, we'll ask them to drop their textbooks and adopt OER, and uh, we'll give them an iPad in return. 
Uh, the first iteration of the OER fellowship was led by a colleague of mine, um, Velda Arno, before I was hired at Lane. And um, she designed a course that was a hybrid class, uh, incentivized instructors to go through a Moodle shell. They met occasionally. Um, by the time I came around, I was able to use the work that Vilda had done and um, and clarify some of the program goals. And uh, I had the benefit of uh, seeing what happened in the past in order to be able to develop um, a program that met some of the challenges that were encountered previously. So when I came on board, I, I we, we we met together and and uh, talked about our central goals for this incentive program. And the first one, of course, is to save students save students money uh, by um, getting instructors to create more textbook free courses. That's of course the primary goal that we always have to keep in mind. The second goal would be to um, share the OER courses and materials that are developed by instructors uh, along the way so that other instructors can adopt those materials and therefore um, uh, you know, save students more money. Uh, a third goal is to create an OER campus community um, to get some advocates going here on campus to allow folks to sort of feel like they can talk about the OER adoption process to work together uh, and to cooperate. And then the fourth goal is to make the fellowship and OER work transparent. And um, that's especially because the, uh, the program is funded by students. We wanted to make sure that the, the process that instructors go through as well as the results of their, their course conversions are transparent and easy to track. Oh, I'll say too that um, I was able to from from seeing the the results of the the previous cohorts, I was able to clarify some other uh, sort of secondary goals and and some of those secondary goals included being able to make the um, incentive program flexible. I, I'm sure many of you on your own campuses um, the the message that time is one of the major barriers for uh, instructors adopting OER in order, you know, they have to they have to reconstruct their classes. That takes time. Um, so time is a challenge for our instructors here. It's hard to get people to meet consistently. Everybody's schedules don't line up. Uh, um, and it's hard to get folks to sort of go through something that's highly structured, or that's been our experience on this campus. So some of my secondary goals were to design a program that was self-paced um, and asynchronous and allowed instructors to approach the material on their own time and also to meet instructors where they were because some of our instructors were already familiar with the idea of OER or had done some work already of uh, adopting OER in their courses and other instructors who were interested were completely unfamiliar with OER, Creative Commons, copyright, and so on. Um, so we, we tried to make something that was flexible in order to meet the, the various needs on campus. So we came up with uh, the design of a points-based rubric system. Um, if you earn 100 points, you get the iPad. Uh, the, you, you can see I copied a, a small portion of the, uh, the rubric here. This is the classic, I call it the classic rubric for individuals who are looking to convert their course to textbook free. Uh, both of these rubrics, rubrics are available online and you're welcome to copy them and use them. I provided the URL here in the top right corner to the OER at Lane blog where you'll see most of the action happens, blogs.lanecc.net slash OER. Um, so you're welcome to go and check out the rubrics. Um, 100 points for the iPad. If you uh, I have you know the outcomes on the left side and evidence shown on the right side, I'll talk a little bit more about how instructors um, provide evidence for meeting these rubric objectives. Uh, but you ha you see at the very bottom here, I also have smaller point chunks um, so that uh, instructors can kind of work slowly and dabble and earn points along the way. Um, so if they convert their entire course to textbook free, 
and provide the evidence that I've listed over on the right, include, which includes sharing the materials that they've created and the courses that they've created there in the iPad. But they also have the opportunity to earn uh, points in smaller chunks by converting like a unit or a week's worth of work in their course earns uh, 15 points. Um, if they attend a workshop, an OER workshop, or participate in an OER webinar, they get a small number of points for those. If they create an OER and share that in one of the repositories, they can earn small chunks of points for those. Oh, somebody has corrected my URL here. Uh, thank you. You're right. My slide, <laughs> we, we changed our blog URL, but thank you for providing the, uh, the corrected uh, URL for the blogs here in the chat window. Uh, it should be edu, not net. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Okay, so this is the rubric for individuals. Um, recently, I developed a rubric for discipline teams as well. Uh, I have a team working on a biology course right now, a team of three. This we're sort of an experiment. This rubric is a little bit more um, uh, linear. There are specific steps, um, and uh, the idea here was to try to uh, increase buy-in, especially some of our courses, high enrollment courses, multiple instructors teach those courses at the same time. So the idea was to try to gather those folks in a team and create an open um, version that incorporates OER. Uh, we've got our first team going, and I'll be able to report back on the, the success a little bit further down the line. I, I took a screenshot here of also the um, incentives. We started out by having just the iPad uh, that folks could earn for 100 points. Um, but we've tried to also incentivize folks to do some more repeated OER work and come up with some different incentive levels. So uh, I, I've included that here. And uh, <laughs> we also tried to include a few different uh, options, uh, not just the, um, the tyranny of Apple. So uh, you can see our 100 points is expanded from iPads to other devices as well. Okay, so we have the rubric powers the um, fellowship, but the structure of the fellowship, like I mentioned, one of the, the goals is to have this work be transparent and asynchronous. So um, we decided to uh, adapt. Um, there's a, a MOOC called DS106, Digital Storytelling 106. Um, and the, uh, the participants all are responsible for creating their own individual blog. So all of my faculty participating set up either a, a free WordPress blog or a Lane uh, hosted blog. And they are responsible for posting evidence that, that uh, shows that they've met the rubric objectives on their own blog. And I have a, a central blog, which was what we provided the uh, URL for blogs. Um, let me look it up again blogs.lanecc.edu slash OER. Um, and at the central blog syndicates all of the blog posts from my participants. Um, so we have instructors uh, subscribe to the central blog and follow the blog posts that show up there. But they have their own individual blog in order to post when they find OER or when they participate in an OER workshop um, and to post the, the, the progress that they've made on their own conversion projects. At the end of the fellowship, um, instructors are required to create a screencast overview of their now converted courses. And I'm able to keep track of um, all of my different participants and, and be able to demonstrate their different conversion projects, you know, even looking into the past. Uh, so this helped us to meet the goal of having a transparent project so that the students who funded the project are able to go and see the work that's been done. So we try to provide different types of support. Um, when the fellowship first started, we were doing lots of face-to-face uh, -face, uh, technology workshops here on campus, software type workshops, screencasting, uh, soft chalk, those types of things. And we still hold some of those. 
um, and some of the different fac faculty technology specialists schedule uh, specific workshops that help facilitate especially the creation of OER. Um, and participants are able to earn points by participating in those. Um, in the last year or so, we've moved more towards creating online learning objects and then uh, providing sort of support office hours. That's more of what I currently do. Um, on the blog, I post uh, support materials, learning objects. I create videos to orient um, instructors to the fellowship program. Uh, I post notices about webinars that are coming up. Um, I, I try to inform them about different guides and resources and repositories. And that's all done through the blog. Um, I have lots and lots of support that I give through email. Instructors email me all the time asking me questions about, uh, you know, usually it's specific to their class. So this, this seems to work out well because the type of OER work that my writing instructors do is quite a bit different than the type of OER work that my uh, math or science instructors do. They have different types of questions. They have to explore different types of repositories. Um, so in this way, I'm able to sort of cover the bases via learning objects and then provide some individual coaching, either in person. Sometimes folks stop by my office and, and chat with me or through email. We also have a academic technology center here on campus that provides basic uh, technology support, um, including help with Moodle and some of the course design technology course design components as well. I should have mentioned earlier, too, that the fellowship is open to folks who are teaching face-to-face, uh, -face, hybrid, or online courses. Recently, um, previously I had been collecting all of the resources in a blog category, but I was finding that folks were having a tough time sort of navigating all of the resources posted on the blog, and that worked well for the folks who are participating in the fellowship, sort of going along in the cohort. Usually we do a two-term cohort. We have 10-week terms here, so usually it takes uh, folks about two terms. Sometimes folks complete in one term. Uh, to convert their entire course. So when folks were following along with the blog posts uh, and, and following the resources, that was working out well. Um, but recently, there's been more and more need to consolidate uh, the, the resources and the information uh, about how to approach OER, how to start out with OER, how to approach questions of copyright. So recently, I created a guide consolidating um, many of the learning objects that, uh, that we've posted. Um, and I have the URL for that here in the upper right corner. Uh, you're welcome, again, to copy this and use it for yourself. I have information about how to get started, uh, where to look, information about copyright, and information about creating OER. So <laughs> we have 38 courses converted uh, for what I believe is a conservative estimate of 387 thousand six hundred dollars of student money saved per year. Um, I think that this is conservative because uh, this information is based off of the incentive application. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, but I run into instructors frequently who have participated in the fellowship and said that once they converted one course, uh, they were motivated to convert multiple courses, that they helped other instructors convert courses. There was growing interest. Um, and so on. I see somebody asking for me to post the, uh, the LibGuide URL. It's up here on the right top corner. I have a slide as well at the end that will include all of the URLs. Thanks for the help there, Jim. All right. So this is current. And I, I have a cohort that will complete at the end of spring term. And we'll be starting another one. Um, I think that by the end of this year, we're going to be pushing half a million dollars in student money saved. So I think that's a great return on investment. Uh, recently, I've been trying to focus more on tracking and assessment of, uh, of the program. Um, so we've always collected through, we have instructors at the end of the fellowship have to fill out an online incentive application, and that captures the material, you know, the, the details about which course they're, um, in, they're, they've converted, when they plan to teach it next, um, how much money students 
spent before the conversion on course materials. Uh, so we've always tracked in that sort of way. Um, this term, I adapted a student satisfaction survey that was um, created by uh, Tacoma Community College. I think we'll be hearing from them later. And I've been motivated by um, some of the assessment work that uh, I think uh, Quill, West, Quill West has led there. Um, so I, I took the student satisfaction survey, adapted it, and we just recently deployed it. So I'm starting to get some results that ask questions about how students who are uh, taking these OER courses perceive the open course materials, whether or not they've been helpful, um, and so on. Next, I'd like to uh, try to track some of the student learning and completion data of the OER converted courses compared to some traditional textbook type courses and uh, look at retention data. And like I said, that was inspired by a lot of the work that uh, Tacoma Community College is currently doing. So um, I've included their URL here. And I think we're going to be hearing from them a little bit later. I see Una saying they'll be talking uh, at 1 PM Pacific today. So that's the overview of our uh, faculty fellowship uh, program here. I saw that there were lots of questions that went by as I was trying to cover my material. So I'd be happy to answer them. I'll, I'll uh, go back through and look a little bit. Or if you have one that's uh, up in your mind at this moment, be, be sure to post. I've tried to include a few URLs for more information uh, about our, our programs here. OK, so I see um, a question here about uh, high enrollment courses first or just volunteer faculty? Um, that's a great question. We started out with asking folks uh, to volunteer. Um, our campus is unionized, and our union contract gives instructors the, the um, right to choose the materials for their courses. Um, so we have started out by just incentivizing and making the program voluntary. And my hope has been, and it's proved to, it's, it's, it's been successful, I think fairly successful. My hope has been to attract some of the early adopters, the folks who are engaged in teaching and learning. You know, probably you have them on your campus too, the folks who are willing to test out things that, that seem to work and seem to make sense, um, and then have advocates in the different departments. And now we've been able to um, branch out into some of those high enrollment courses by using those departmental advocates. Um, in our developmental ed uh, department, um, they're starting to create new classes, and, and it's one of a it's a requirement that any new class that they create, they're restructuring their classes. Any classes that they create must use OER. So I feel like that's a great success. And the same thing is starting to happen in science as well. Um, our our biology courses, they're restructuring the curriculum there and looking to use OER. Um, so. It's been voluntary, but sort of strategically voluntary. Let me see what other questions. I see a request to go back a slide to look at the URLs, I believe. What other questions do you have? So I see Jessica asking about uh, the political and financial impact on our bookstore for going OER. Um, I was fortunate to come into the, uh, the, the project after some of the groundwork had already been laid. and. Um, some of the folks, the administrative folks and the students had already brought uh, representatives from the bookstore on board into the conversation. So by the time I came on board, conversations had already been started with the bookstore and there wasn't a lot of political backlash. You know, our, our bookstore worked with us to try to think about how this makes sense for students and also try to think about other ways uh, that the bookstore could support these types of initiatives like pay for print and so on. Um, so there have been ongoing conversations at the bookstore. It hasn't really been a big political battle here for us. Um, and, uh, and our bookstore has been sort of willing to, to look at ways that they might be able to help 
uh, pay for print and so on. Question about how um, the students funded the project. I mentioned early on in the slides. It looks like uh, you you were you came in late, Paige. Um, that we had our our students had a tuition refund a few years ago. So they had a, a large chunk of money. The student government had a large chunk of money that they were able to uh, decide how to um, to carve it up. And and this was one of the things that textbook affordability was one of the things they were concerned with. And one of our academic our dean of academic technology pointed them in the direction of OER. Any other questions? So I see Paige's question about the student savings. And it looks like, Paige, you're asking about um, whether our instructors are adopting full OER textbooks or whether they're adopting OER units. The um, requirement for the 100-point the iPad incentive and the, the, the student saving tracking is for a conversion to a textbook-free course. So some of those instructors adopted things like an OpenStax textbook, while others identified their more specific learning objectives in their courses and looked for OER that addressed those specifically. But those are now courses that uh, are completely free material-wise to students. Um, so students are not required to purchase any materials for those courses. Is that, I hope that answers your question. Well, thank you all so much for the opportunity to talk about the fellowship. If you have any other questions, you're always welcome to email me, and I'll put my address down here.